This is Dawn Montgomery. We're here at the Atlanta Voice, and I have the privilege to interview former Mayor Kasim Reed. How yeah, are I you? I think this I still morning? get to keep this. Title. <laughs> so you can call me Mayor. Call something. you Mayor. Okay, no problem. Or or whatever no problem. No problem. Let's get that out of the way. Yes. <laughs> so we have you here today just to kind of talk to you about why you're running and what you're doing at this point. Happily, I'm running because my daughter was being dropped off at home by her grandmother, her car was burglarized in the time that it took for her to get in the mm -hmm. elevator and, and take her up to the condominium unit. And, and right after that, my mom walked into a Chick-fil-A at Colony Square mm -hmm. where she has her breakfast. And then later in that same day, that Chick-fil-A was robbed in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. While she wasn't there when the robbery occurred, mm -hmm. she did go to the Chick-fil-A that day and that's the Chick-fil-A that she goes to. Anytime that happens, it's some place you know, you feel a special jump in your heart. And then mm -hmm. right after that, one of my dear friends was the victim of an attempted carjacking, mm -hmm. had the wherewithal to get videotape of the license plate and mm -hmm. no one ever came to follow up. Wow. So all of these things happened back to back to back. I did an appearance on the Frank Ski Show where Frank asked me if I was going to run for mayor. And mm -hmm. I had no plans of running for mayor at all. Right. But I don't believe that there's a term limit on being a citizen. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you see your city completely falling apart, mm -hmm. which is what I believe is happening to the city of Atlanta, then you have as much of a right as anybody else to, to talk about it. If you fast forward, Mayor Bottoms made the decision to uh, not seek a second term and to spend time with her family and loved ones. Right. And so I think it created a huge void. I think that Atlanta has about 18 months mm -hmm. um, to really pull um, our city together and unify our city in a way that's been consistent with our tradition over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. Right now, because of the level of violent crime that people are experiencing, mm -hmm. um, women are driving around right now with their gas tanks on E because of the fear that they have when they go to a gas station. Mm -hmm. I know professional women like yourselves who worked hard all of their lives to have a nice automobile. Right. They're buying a second automobile mm -hmm. um, that is less likely to be stolen mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're so scared yeah. about going to a gas station in our city. Mm -hmm. In my lifetime, I've never gone to Lenox Mall and walked through a metal detector. I've never mm -hmm. gone to Phipps <laughs> and walked through a metal detector. I've never shopped and had to hide the bag mm -hmm. that I purchased an item in and put a white bag over it. Right for fear of being robbed on the walk to the car. Right, right. So all of these things are happening and, and no one was really saying what is happening to our sense of community. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Atlanta was turned into a playground during COVID. Mm -hmm. And people from all across the country were mm -hmm. flying into Atlanta uh, and behaving in a way that's inconsistent with the Atlanta way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe that those behaviors leaked into our local community mm -hmm. because right. folks have a tendency to say if they're doing it, then I'm doing it as well. Yeah. And uh, I believe that this level of, of violence need to be turned around, yeah. and I've done it before. Yes. And I believe that Atlanta's at a critical point and we don't have time uh, for amateurs. Mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta is in need of heart surgery right now. Mm. We're in critical condition in my judgment. And if I were gonna get heart surgery next week, I want someone that does heart surgery. That has experience. Um, <laughs> when I became mayor before, Atlanta was experiencing a violent crime surge then. We were in the worst economy that we had been in 80 years. Mm -hmm. President Obama had just come into office. We passed the $784 billion stimulus was passed by his administration. Mm -hmm. Property tax uh, roll digest in Atlanta was dropping. Foreclosures were rampant. Mm -hmm. Unemployment was rampant at yeah. that time. And we were able to turn the tide and deliver eight balanced budgets. Uh, seven out of eight years, less mm -hmm. than 100 people were murdered mm -hmm. yeah. in the city of Atlanta. Last year, 157 people were murdered mm -hmm. and they're never coming back and they're never seeing their families yeah. again. So that's why I'm running mm -hmm. because um, I don't believe, I'll say it in a positive way, mm -hmm. I believe that my skill set is uniquely positioned to unify the city, push back on violence and deal with the issues that I just laid out for you. Great, great, I love to hear that. Now you spoke about your daughter early yeah, in Maria this. Christian. Um, tell me how has she helped change your perspective in life and leadership overall? Well, I got elected mayor at 40 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and I got elected to my dream job. I did not have a child at the time I was mm-hmm. elected. And I think that if you're the same person at 52 than you were at 40, um, you're not growing as a human being. And mm-hmm. you're probably not learning a lot. Right. My daughter centers me. Mm. Um, I am a better person. I am more patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am more collaborative. And um, I just think that, you know, when you have a child, um, you know, you walk around with your heart outside, so you have other priorities. Yes. I also think you have much greater sensitivity to what uh, other folks are going through Mm -hmm. in their lives. Mm -hmm. Um, When I was mayor, I opened every single recreation center in the city of Atlanta until six or seven o'clock at night, six days a week, mm-hmm. um, because I wanted moms to have a break. Yeah. But that was intellectual. Mm-hmm. Right? When you actually have a daughter and you know what it is to pick up a daughter from either after school mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. daycare yes. or all of the rest, it's a different feeling rather than a policy decision. Mm-hmm. 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 And so on all of the issues, I think that, um, I think that, um, that children make everything better. Mm-hmm. And I think that they cause you to focus on the future Mm -hmm. and to want to make sure uh, that um, their future is better than yours. Yes. I plan to die in Atlanta. I plan to be buried in Oakland Cemetery. I plan to raise my family in Atlanta. And Mm -hmm. that's why I'm not going to sit on the sidelines while this city gets ripped apart. Yes. Uh, As we sit here right now in this beautiful studio, um, congratulations to the Atlanta Voice. Mm -hmm. Um, 20% of the city wants to leave. Mm-hmm. And if an election were held tomorrow, 73% of the people in Buckhead would vote to leave. Right. Um, the referendum is November of 2022. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that if we don't turn around the kind of crime and violence that mm-hmm. allows, causes young girls to, to be killed mm-hmm. at Lenox, mm-hmm. Just last week, I was with a young woman named Colonia Mm -hmm. who was hit by a straight bullet. Yeah. Right? Bullet hit her buttocks, Mm -hmm. went through her knee, Mm. ended up in her ankle. Mm. Um, And she has had multiple surgeries um, to to, to cure that. And and the fact of the matter is, is things were better when I was mayor. Mm Mm-hmm. I understand. I understand. It's not your imagination. Mm-hmm. You were able, you got gas. <laughs> if somebody carjacked somebody when I was mayor, I was looking for them until I found them. Mm-hmm. It was a real situation. Mm-hmm. We built the biggest police force in the history of this city. Mm-hmm. We hired 900 police officers, but we did it in a way that was consistent with our values. Mm-hmm. So we had 1.6 million officer interactions. Police officers fired their guns less than 17 times. Mm-hmm. I was the person that disbanded Red Dog. I was the person that said officers would have body cams. I was the person that uh, said that we should decriminalize marijuana. Mm -hmm. I was the person that said that if an officer is involved in a shooting, the GBI, a third party that's independent, should investigate it. So at the same time, while you are strong on public safety, Mm -hmm. you can do it in a way that's consistent with the post-525 George Floyd world. Mm -hmm. So how will you take the opportunity, you know, from your experience, Mm -hmm. come back and say, you know, Atlanta, I need you to back me on this. I need you to help support me. How will you encourage Atlantans to, you know, trust you in moving forward and what that looks like? Well, more than trust me, I would ask them to look at my record. Mm -hmm. Um, with everybody else that's running for mayor, it's a hypothetical. Mm-hmm. So you don't have a record of them being mayor to see mm-hmm. what they would do. Mm-hmm. Um, as it relates to me, you know what I will do. Uh, so um, I will bring crime down quickly. Mm-hmm. And really, what's going on, Don, to, you know, to, to put it in layperson's term, is that things are just out of cold right now. People yeah. are behaving in a manner that you and I know is not the way that we traditionally handle our affairs. Right, 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 right. Right? So, um, and it is, it is delivering poison to the, the goose that lays the golden egg. Mm-hmm. So Atlanta is a unique city in the world. It's definitely a unique city in the world for black people. Right. And because of the level of violence that's going on, the number of murders, mm-hmm. 
people being shot on the freeway, just these outsized acts of violence. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a full shootout in front of Cheetah nightclub. Yeah. I mean, not somebody got shot, but a back and forth yeah. exchange of gunfire. People casually carrying machine guns mm -hmm. in backpacks. So it's not a shootout, it is an AR-15. Right. All of these things, and I haven't seen anyone stand up and push back in a forceful way on behalf of the city. Mm -hmm. And when I was mayor, I did that and also maintained our values. Right. So my, my, my comment really is less about trust me mm -hmm. than look at what I did. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that again. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm elected, I'm going to hire 500 to 7, 500 police officers in the short term. Mm -hmm. 750 in the long term. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn the tide of violence in 180 days, but I'm also going to lead with humanity in my heart. We're going to open every single recreation center six days a week to seven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Moms are going to have a safe haven for their children and young people. We're going to provide snacks and warm meals, which attracts more young people to the recreation center. Mm -hmm. We're going to fund every important sports activity mm -hmm in the city of Atlanta. Yeah. Basketball, football, all of the things that we traditionally did and academic pursuits. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna launch the Mayor's uh, Youth Initiative and every child in our city between the ages of 13 and 18 years old will have a job paying $15 an hour for six weeks every summer. Mm. So we're not just gonna lead by talking tough and being tough on crime, mm -hmm. We're gonna be smart. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna have a 100 day amnesty period. So if you've got a warrant or a tra traffic ticket or something, a traffic violation, a $75 ticket, after all of the fees and fines and all the rest can end up being 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. We're gonna tell everybody in the city for 100 days, come clean it up. Yeah. And the city's gonna pay for it. Mm -hmm. So that gives all of the brothers out there that have a situation uh, warrant, except for DUIs. Mm -hmm. So you will not be able to walk away from a DUI yeah. because lives are placed at risk with DUIs. But for everything else, for 100 days, you get to walk in and clear your slate. Mm -hmm. But on the 101st day, we're going back to normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the point I'm making is, is what you're gonna see with me is a politics of the soft and the hard. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to come in and be Joe Don Baker from Walking Tall, or <laughs> some tough guy, but we are going to bring it down. Right, right. So during the time of the, the start of the pandemic and dealing with having time to be at home and just reflect yeah. on, you know, your past two terms and your experience, yeah. your political career, yeah. um, just talk about some things that you feel like you could have done better or sure. the things that you've already spoken on that you know you can do moving sure. forward, no matter the time difference, because that's kind of where the naysayers are like, well, yeah, you did this years ago, but would that apply now? So just yeah. talk about what you think you could have done better and think, what you did right. I think that I definitely could have been more vigilant um, to have made sure that the kind of behavior um, that people went to jail for, mm -hmm. um, that that was not allowed or that we worked harder to make sure that that never occurred. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I would do in the second term is uh, make sure that no person who's ever filed for bankruptcy um, in any manner would be able to serve in my administration. Because okay. I think that that led to some of the, the issues that we have. Um, every member of my senior team will go through quarterly ethics training. Mm -hmm. And that keeps ethics at top of mind and an opportunity for everybody to talk about whatever they want mm -hmm, to talk mm -hmm. about. We're gonna have a chief ethics counsel mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, my office to keep everyone vigilant around the issues. Okay. So I want everybody to know that I accept full responsibility mm -hmm. uh, for individuals that broke the law during my administration. Mm -hmm. um, but if I accept full responsibility for all of that, I also accept full responsibility for reducing crime to its lowest yeah, level. Right, right. I also accept full responsibility mm -hmm. for a record number of visitors. Mm -hmm. I also accept full responsibility for 200 million in cash reserves. Mm -hmm. 
I also accept full responsibility for record population growth. Mm -hmm. I also accept full responsibility from moving the city from 400 million in construction to 5 billion in construction. Mm -hmm. I accept full responsibility for working with Governor Nathan Deal to right. create the motion picture and television sector right. from 380 million and to 9.5 billion. I also mm -hmm. accept responsibility from growing the technology mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. So all I ask is what I think most people want. You want to be judged by your whole life. Yeah. So there are areas where I was definitely wrong and made mistakes, mm -hmm. but that's all of us. Right, right. And I believe in the people of Atlanta and I'm confident when they look at the totality of my record mm -hmm. and the situation we're in right now, I think that they will conclude that I'm the best person to deal with the situation we're in right now. Right. And because I wasn't trying to be mayor before, I think that that speaks to the fact that I am doing this because I really want to help the city. Mm -hmm. I did not need to do it. Mm -hmm. I've done well in private life. Right. Um, my family is in good shape, mm -hmm. but I think that this is a unique time. Mm -hmm. One of the relationships, one of the people that I've been getting a lot of advice from is Mayor Jackson III. Mm -hmm. So there's only one person in the history of the city to be mayor for three terms, and that was Maynard Jackson. And so I talked to Maynard III just to see what his father was feeling mm -hmm. and what made him choose to run for a third term. And I thought that I was going to get this big intellectual <laughs> answer, and, and Maynard III said he did it because he felt the city needed him. Mm. Well, I think... Maynard is in a category, Mayor Jackson is in a category of all, of all by himself. Mm -hmm. But rather than believing that Atlanta needs me, I'm prepared to offer the help. And I think I have some skills that are aligned with the moment. Right, right, right. And one of those skills that I wanted to point out um, in our last question is just your previous relationship with Republican administrations. Yes. Um, and I know you've talked to, about this in great lengths of you not liking the relationship between the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia as of right now. Um, just share how you plan to just make that more amendable, like more like, mm -hmm. like we're here to work together, we're not here to do separate things or to even bicker through the news, you know? Yeah, so, so, so here's what I feel. First of all, um, I'm not approaching it to cast aspersions on mm -hmm. Mayor Bottoms or Governor Kemp, mm -hmm. but I know that the relationship can be better because I had the best relationship with the Republican governor of anybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about any mayor and mm -hmm. governor. Mm -hmm. Um, and we got there because on any given day, the governor and the mayor are the first and second most powerful people mm -hmm. in the state. Mm -hmm. And what we, when we came into office, uh, we were in a great recession and people just needed jobs. And people don't remember how bad it was in 09 and in 10 when mm -hmm. just massive foreclosure, yeah. massive unemployment, a contracting construction sector. Mm -hmm. um, we needed to get people jobs. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we came together because he wasn't gonna succeed and I wasn't gonna succeed if we didn't find a way mm -hmm. to put people back to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the conclusion that we came to was that there are about 20% of things that we agreed on around economic development and job creation. Okay. And on those things, we would be completely aligned. Right. Well, when you have the first and second most powerful individuals in the state growing in the same direction around job growth, mm -hmm. you end up having 17 corporate uh, US and regional headquarters for businesses locating in the city limits, mm -hmm. the largest job growth in the city limits proper mm -hmm. since the Centennial Olympics. Mm -hmm. And when we had disagreements, the governor's office is 333 steps away mm -hmm. from the mayor's office. You get up and walk over there. Right. They'll see you. Yeah. Um, and so as much as I enjoy social media and tweeting and all of the rest and Facebook and Instagram, I never did that with the governor. Mm -hmm. And there were things that occurred between us that we disagreed about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if we disagreed, we talked mm -hmm. because the, the challenge in front of us was so big. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, this community that we're sitting in right now, yeah. there was a foreclosure notice yep. on every house. On every People house. were flipping houses, yes. got caught uh, flipping. I mean, just the amount mm -hmm. of foreclosures were just unbelievable. So we were trying to recover from all of that. I happen to know Governor Kemp well, mm -hmm. served with him in the Georgia State Senate. I believe that a relationship base is the beginning for anything. Right. Knowing someone and being able to have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm confident that I can restore the relationship between the city and the state and people who understand government know that that's a foundational relationship. Mm -hmm. The other good thing is, is that um, like when Governor Deal was governor of the state, uh, President Obama was in office and so he had a Democratic administration. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to help the state with the deepening of Savannah Port mm. and matters that related to the federal government. Right. Similarly, most of the folks who served with President Obama are now back in Washington under President Biden and Vice President Harris. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that we will continue to be a good ally to the state gotcha. on issues that are federal. I also think that we're gonna be able to uh, attract more federal resources than we have in history. Mm -hmm. um, during my last term in office, uh, I won more federal money for the city of Atlanta than at any time since Hearts of Jackson Airport was built. Okay. And so um, I won four out of six Tiger Grants, mm -hmm. uh, which are all competitive. Very I won a Neighborhood Choice Grant, mm -hmm. 30 million from HUD. Um, so my sense is, is that while 1.2 trillion is being spent <laughs> and another position is 3.5 trillion, mm -hmm. so two trillion dollars is getting ready to be spent on infrastructure alone. Mm -hmm. And so um, my record and my relationships, I think, will allow me to deliver more to Atlanta and more to Georgia than we ever have gotten before. Right. And that's going to be terrific for you. Right, right. The good news is that unlike uh, in 09 and 10 and 11, once we push back on our crime challenges, the economy is terrific. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the underlying problem of joblessness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because the economy is really worried. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is in 180 to 240 days, show people in Buckhead and all through the city that crime and violence was a moment in time mm -hmm. and not a permanent condition. Right. Put you in a position where you feel safer than you've ever been. Mm -hmm. Mayor has really three fundamental jobs. And my job is when you wake up in the morning and leave your house and come into the city, that you get home safely and get to put that key in the door when you get home. Mm -hmm. Safely. Safely. I left, I got home. Mm -hmm. As I was when I left. Mm -hmm. That's my number one job. Second job is to make sure that if you decide to purchase a home in our city, that your home rises in value. Mm -hmm. Because if you made that investment, that's the biggest investment that most folks have in their lives. Right, right. It's their nest egg. So my job is to make sure that that investment is rising. It will not rise if Atlanta is crime infested. Yeah, understood. Right? So then you can't even move if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The third thing I have to do as mayor is to make sure that the environment is right so you have a job. Mm -hmm. And if I'm really doing my job well, that if you got fired, you could get another one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you don't mm -hmm. work with the pressure of feeling like this is the only thing that I can do. Mm -hmm. Atlanta right now has boundless employ in opportunities in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. And while I was mayor, we had the biggest expansion of growth in the creative and entrepreneurial sectors. Right. So people could really go and be what they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, the other day I was at a home that unfortunately is located in Fed. It's a group of young people that have a TikTok content house. Is it collab? Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, it's collab. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's no way in the world that if I were mayor, they wouldn't be in Atlanta. Right, right, right. Um, but that's just one example of the, I mean, people want to be entrepreneurs. The water boys, mm -hmm. they don't want to work for anybody. Mm -hmm. And if I'm fortunate enough to be mayor, they're going to have the city of Atlanta as a client. Mm -hmm. 
but you're not going to be on intersections. Understood. Because you're not going to walk up to a woman who has no cash. Right. And she tried to Venmo or cash up you mm-hmm. at an intersection. Right, right, right. That's because not safe. Because you, you are so both ends. aggressive <laughs> that you're demanding money. Mm-hmm. She's trying to respond and drive, mm-hmm. and your body is on her automobile. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And they they do it more aggressively towards women. Yeah, they do. <laughs> right. So I mean, you literally have a woman trying to cash app someone she's never met in mm-hmm. her life mm-hmm. to drive. Mm-hmm. So I want everybody to know while I'm running, so you can vote for me or not vote mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. that I'm not going to allow that, mm-hmm. but I am going to raise $2 million mm-hmm. to help put them in businesses so that they um, earn a terrific income. I'm also not going to close the jail. Right. I'm going to keep the jail open. I believe that it never should have been closed because criminals read a lot and they're, in, they're increasingly literate mm-hmm. and well-read. Mm-hmm. And if they know that Fulton County Jail is full, which means they can't even take me and the Atlanta Jail is closed, mm-hmm. if I see you and decide to rob you, mm-hmm. I know that I've got probably a 99% chance, even if I got caught, of going home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not gonna be the case That's when I'm there. Um, Last, I would say this, when you're mayor of an international city known for its tradition of civil and human rights, something that happens in Minneapolis or Baton Rouge or Los Angeles can end up causing 10,000 protesters in Atlanta for something that had absolutely nothing to do with anything that happened in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So you need a jail function so that you can handle that responsibly and without putting cases on people, Mm -hmm. right? Because as mayor, you have more discretion to say, allow these individuals to be processed and released to a signature bond. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you don't have that function and the state arrests that individual, then the case is then a state case, Mm -hmm. which drastically changes the life. If it's some young people from Emory or Georgia Tech or the Atlanta University Center who are out Mm -hmm. getting their protest on. Right. Well, thank you for your time Mm -hmm. right now. And we're going to ask more questions and we'll be sharing more details here from the Atlanta Voice with Kissing Reed.